In this video, we will show you how to create barcodes, data matrices, and QR codes, as well as review some of their most basic options. So let's start by clicking on the Create Barcode button in the vertical toolbar. Then click anywhere in the workspace to insert a barcode. Now let's take a closer look at this barcode. When we zoom in, we'll see that the bars in the barcode aren't filled. If we were to mark this as is, the laser would only mark the outline of each bar. Now we want to fill it in, so to do that, we will click on the Hatch button located on the left here, and this will bring up our Hatch options. We will review these in a future video, so for now, let's just make sure that Enable is checked, and when we click OK, we'll see that the bars are now filled in. Now let's take a look at the different barcode options we have. Uh, to do that, we will click on this icon with the barcode on it. And this window shows us all the options we have for our barcode. In the top left corner here, we have the text box. And this is what a scanner would read if it were to scan the barcode. On the right side, we have different options for setting the size of the barcode. The bar height sets the height of the bars in the barcode. And the narrow width determines the width of the bars. In addition to setting the size for each individual bar, you can set the size for the entire barcode instead. To do that, click on the fixed size checkbox. And below you can set the height and the width of the entire barcode. So for example, if we set the X or the width at 10 millimeters and the Y or the height at 10 millimeters, when we click OK, we'll see that the entire barcode is 10 by 10 millimeters. Next, let's check out this invert option. Usually when you mark a barcode, the laser marks the bars. But if you choose the invert option, the laser will instead mark the area around the bars. When laser marking on dark materials, using the invert option can create a higher contrast mark, making it easier for the barcode to be read. Next we have the scale section. We won't go into much detail here, but basically this controls the size of your bars relative to the size of the space between them. This can be particularly helpful when you don't have much space to mark your barcode. Manipulating the space may make it easier for a scanner to differentiate between the bars and the spaces on smaller marks. At the bottom we have the quiet zone. The quiet zone is a blank space between the edges of your marking area and the edges of your barcode. It is used to make sure that there isn't anything near the barcode that could interfere with the scan. When used with the invert option, it can create a higher contrast mark. Let's see what that looks like. So let's turn invert back on. Remember that on an inverted mark, the laser will mark the black area, not the white area. So essentially, the quiet zone creates a border around the inverted mark so that a scanner can read the barcode more easily. You can change the size of the quiet zone above, below, or on the sides of the barcode separately. Lastly, we have the show text option. When checked, the value of the barcode will be marked below it so that you don't have to create a separate text object to show this information. You have different text options available, including your choice of font. Also, note that the space between the barcode and the text is affected by the values in the quiet zone. So that's it for barcodes. Let's move on to data matrices. To do that, we just open up this drop-down box on the left. And when we do that, we can see all the different code options that are available to us. There are different barcodes, UPCs, and if we scroll down a bit, we can see the data matrix. After we select it, we need to make sure we click Apply to make the change. And now our barcode is a 2D data matrix. We have to click on this barcode button again to open up the different options. And we can see we have some of the same options here that we did for barcodes. We have show text, 
quiet zone, fixed size, and invert. Now, data matrix is made up of cells. And when we go to this drop down box under the word matrix, we see a variety of different options 10 by 10, 12 by 12, and so on. A 10 by 10 would be 10 cells tall by 10 cells wide. 14 by 14 would be 14 cells tall by 14 cells wide. Uh, 32 by 32 is 32 cells tall by 32 cells wide, and so on and so forth. If you choose smallest, the program will make a data matrix as small as possible while still fitting all of the necessary data inside. Now normally the pattern in the data matrix is made up of these thick black lines, but we can change that using these different modes in the top right corner here. We have a point mode, a circle mode, and a rectangle mode. The benefit of using these modes is that they mark a lot faster than a traditional data matrix. Just make sure that your data scanner has no problems reading them. Now, the other popular code that we can choose is the QR code. And if we choose it from this drop-down box and click on the barcode button again, we bring up its options and we see that the options are very similar to the daily matrix options. And actually you can see that the QR code that we've created is made up of tiny squares. And that's because we chose rectangle mode last for the data matrix and that carried over to this QR code. So if we uncheck rectangle mode, we can see that the QR code is the type of QR code that we are used to seeing. And that's all we have for this video. If you have any questions, you can leave us a message in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future tutorials.